Today I'm flying from the unofficial capital of far north Queensland, Townsville, to the Great Barrier Reef hub of Cairns. I hope you enjoy this in-flight review. The entry into Townsville Airport is on ground level for both departures and arrivals. On the left hand side of the terminal are checking counters for Qantas, Virgin, Jetstar, Alliance and Rex. There's also checking counters for Skytrains, but I couldn't see any scheduled flights into Townsville by Skytrains. On the right hand side of the terminal there's the arrivals hall, and between the two there's a cafe and the security checkpoint. Checking was pretty straightforward, there's no self-serve kiosk, you just gotta go up to the counter and check in for Qantas. As I was very early for my flight, clearing security was very quick, despite my phone needing to go through the scanner twice. Once airside, the main waiting area is also on the ground floor. There's a Relay Airport store, selling quite a range of books and tech to go, as well as your regular convenience store stuff. They also stocked quite the range of international travel adapters, which, for a domestic owned airport, is somewhat strange, as well as a colourful selection of North Queensland Cowboys merchandise. There's also a cafe and of course a bar on the ground level, as well as the Contest Club lounge and departure gate 6. I'd planned to spend some time in the lounge, but found it was closed until an hour before boarding. I'd known this was the case at some regional ports, but presumed there'd be other flights departing before mine. Alas, there won't. I instead head upstairs to the remaining five gate lounges, where there's a much better view of the tarmac and runway. While waiting for the lounge to open, I watched a Qantas Dash 8 arrive from Mount Isa, an Alliance Fokker 100 arrive from Phosphate Hill, and a Version 737 arrive from Brisbane. lounge opened an hour before departure of the flight to Brisbane with a queue of people waiting to get inside. The lounge was relatively full until the Brisbane flight boarded, after which there's only three of us left, making an ideal filming conditions. Once inside, the lounge has two seating areas separated by a low divider between the two sections. There are more comfortable lounge style chairs in the central section and less comfortable mini dining style chairs in the area closest to the window. An interesting feature of the lounge is the three clocks on the showing the time for Queensland, New South Wales and the Northern Territory. One of the first places I've ever shown showing a domestic time zones. As daylight savings has ended in the south, the Queensland and New South Wales times were the same. There is a small selection of cold food available as well as soup and the bar open at midday. The selection is limited due to COVID with staff handing you your chosen selection. I had slimmer experience in a few hotel buffets and given what we know now about the aerosol nature of COVID transmission, I'm not sure whether having someone hand you food is actually any safer than just sanitising your hands before serving yourself. Now it was time for boarding with my flight departing from gate 6 on the ground level, which meant a short walk across the tarmac to the Dash 8 that will be taking me up to Cairns. I was greeted on board and offered a seat change to a forward exit row, but as I wanted to try sitting down the back, I decided to stick with my original seat. As you can see, the cabin is a 2-2 configuration in an all-economy layout across 19 rows. The seat next to me is empty, so I had some space to spread out. The legroom isn't too bad, albeit slightly smaller on the window side due to the curvature of the aircraft. Each seat has its own tray table and decent sized storage pocket, which easily houses my water bottle and battery pack. No pushback is required at Townsville, so we departed the gate under our own steam and taxied past the terminal before heading for runway 01. Before takeoff, we passed some fighter jets that had previously landed. Townsville is also home to a RAF base, thus the fighter jets.
After takeoff, we turned truck over Palm Island, where I'd flown the day before, and then turned north following the Great Barrier Reef towards Cairns. My views on the left hand side of the cabin were of the coastline and the occasional reef directly below us. We reached a cruising altitude of 18,000 feet only for about 18 minutes before beginning our descent. During this short cruise, we were served a small snack, which was followed by tea and coffee. Today's flight offered a caramelised pear and almond cake as a snack, which although looking tasty was off limits to this fructose intolerant flyer, so I can't comment on its actual tastes. Leave a comment below if you've also got dietary issues that make eating snacks on planes difficult. I'm yet to find an airline that have a FODMAP friendly me special meal option. Add a cup of tea and water instead. I don't drink a great deal of tea on the ground, except when I fly and I seem to like that generic taste of airline tea. I'm flying on a Bombardier-8 400 airplane with registration VHQOR. This aircraft was delivered direct to some state airlines, a Qantas subsidiary, in February 2009 and have been flying with the airline ever since. It's named Air Peninsula, which is an interesting name for an aircraft with this based in some state and spends most of its time in Queensland. While there's a set naming convention for some aircraft types within Qantas fleet, I couldn't find any information on the naming convention of the Dash 8s, so if you know about it, leave a comment below. There are 31 of the 400 series aircraft in the Qantas Link colours, flying across a few different subsidiary airlines. The cabin is an all economy across 19 rows with 4 abreast in a 2-2 configuration. The total capacity is 74 seats which is pretty standard for a Dash 8. At the rear of the cabin is a small crew galley and the front of the cabin is a compact toilet in front of a forward cargo area. Many people seem to go for the cargo area door before realising that the toilet door is the one that's practically in the cockpit. Unlike Rex, the toilets have functioning wash basins but also Qantas provides sanitising wipes as well. There are small overhead lockers that can fit a backpack, but don't take any roll-on size bags. Instead, there's a premium luggage service offered when you drop the bag at the front door of the steps, and you pick it up at the same place, but obviously at your destination airport. The route between Townsville and Cairns is almost the exclusive domain of Qantas, with some minor competition from Rex, who's got three flights a week, and Alliance with a single flight on Tuesday mornings. Qantas Dash 8s fly at least three times a day, Monday to Saturday, with flights in the morning, middle of the day, and the evening. There's also two flights a day on Sunday, which misses out on the early morning flight. Additionally, there are a few extra flights scattered across the week with a total of 24 weekly services. Keep in mind the cruising at 18,000 feet, the descent was pretty gradual over 14 minutes, as we flew offshore past cans and then turned around to land towards the south on runway 15. The view from the left side of the aircraft gives you a view of the airport and cans before you turn for arrival. On landing at Cairns, it's a short taxi to the gate, where there's a Jetstar A320 waiting, and there's also the Dash 8 100 from Skytrans, which I hope to fly later on this year. Once we get to the gate, the seatbelt sign never actually goes off, but everyone gets up and just sparks the plate anyway. Once we landed, there's a short walk across the tarmac before entering the inside area of the terminal. This is handy if you've got a connecting flight, as you don't need to clear security again. The terminal is quite welcoming to the tourist market that Cairns relies on, including information in multiple languages. Hopefully the overseas tourist market will be able to return, but for now it's just up to the domestic market to fill the gap. I hope you've enjoyed this in-flight review from Townsville to Cairns aboard Qantas Link. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel, and for more in-flight reviews, check out Travel with Kyle at travelwithkyle.com.